Hallo und herzlich willkommen in der Kulturport Lounge bei Elb Jazz 2013 mit Lakeisha Benjamin. Welcome to Elb Jazz. Hello. Thanks. <laughs> You're a real New Yorker, right? Yeah, You're born, and raised, born and raised in New York, Washington Heights. <laughs> That's very rare, isn't it? It's rare in the music business. A lot of people come from uh, the southern states and then right. they migrate to New York. <laughs> so, <laughs> How did you start out making music? I mean, the list of people you played with is like, it seems to me it's endless because I already have a list <laughs> and then I speak to you and you say like, Oh yeah, Lauren Hill, you know, I work with her there, and then Cool yeah. again, and, and the gang does that. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. it keeps adding and more and more. So how did you start? I started out in middle school, so um, I had a choice between band, music, and art, and all my friends were doing music, so I went to music. So it just kind of just happened. I saw the saxophone, and I was like, that's it. Let's make it happen. But you had heard it before. No, I hadn't heard it before, and then they didn't have any saxophones. So I had to wait for a while, and there was a girl that played the saxophone, and I secretly, uh, took hers <laughs> and then I used it as you my own. You had to steal a saxophone so you could become a professional I mean saxophone. I asked her, I said I was not going to give it back, is it okay? She moved the chorus and then I stayed at sax. <laughs> it's embarrassing, <laughs> but that's how it started. Well it's good though. Did you ever meet her again? No, I didn't meet her after school. No, that's it. <laughs> I mean it was like elementary school so okay. that was it. <laughs> So when did you, you know, become real serious about it? I mean, what did you listen to at that time? What were, you, what were your influences, maybe? Well, I'm from Washington Heights, so that's a predominantly Dominican neighborhood. Okay. So I was playing a lot of merengue and salsa. That's how I started. But when I went to um, high school, it's a performing arts school, LaGuardia in New York. So I was in the jazz band. So my director was Bob Stewart, and he plays with, like, Brass Fantasy, Sam Rivers, like, all the free jazz guys. So he got me into playing, you know, big band music. So. Right after that, my first gig was like the Duke Ellington Orchestra, the ghost band playing How in the city. How old were you then? Wow, 16, 15, 16. Wow. Something where I was <laughs> afraid, <laughs> very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty young, yeah. But it's pretty obvious that you, you know, you're not afraid anymore. It's not much that can shock you. <laughs> well, back then, I mean, the first real gig I got with a person, I guess with a name, was I was playing with Clark Terry. He had a band called the Young Titans of Jazz. So that's pretty, that wasn't, <laughs> that'll train you for anything. Wow. Yeah, Clark Terry is a legend. I mean. And he plays fast, fast, fast on the spot. <laughs> so. I mean, you go, there's the guy that actually influenced Miles, who is Miles' first idol. <laughs> and then you're on stage with him and, you know, you're a young upcoming artist. That must be kind of scary. It was scary. And everybody in the band was older than me, so it was scary. <laughs> but it helped, it helped. When did you form the Soul Squad? Because that's, you know, that's your band now. Yeah, I think uh, I was in college and I had a band called Spirit and we played a lot of jazz music. And then I started, uh, since I was playing with all these R&B people, and I was really, really at the time listening to James Brown and Maceo and Sly and the Family Stone's Fresh album all day. Every day I had Fresh on repeat. And I was like, what if I made a band like this? And Solomon was, he's my best friend. He was actually there and he was like, let's do it. So I like spent all <laughs> night and wrote some music and then we just started and I had to make a, a MySpace page. And he's like, what are we gonna call it? And I was like, it's called the Soul Squad. So we just <laughs> put it together. Wow. And that was it. But then it actually take, took a little while, you know, for you to actually make Retox. Yeah, well, because I was also like, I felt like I was, uh, you know, capable of having a band, but I was so busy with my obligations for assignment with other artists. Like when you're playing with other people with names, you have no choice but to You should name some names. I mean, you, you, we're like <laughs> kind of beating around the bush all the time, kind of. It's like. <laughs> I mean, around that time, who was I playing with? I was playing with the Cool in the Gang. I was playing with Stevie Wonder. I was playing, I had done a tour with Prince. I mean, it was a lot of people. I was playing with Rashid Ali. I was playing with Joanne Brackeen. It was a lot of people, a lot of different. Was it at that time still? I heard a, a story from a guy who worked with Stevie for a long time who said that you actually needed to know every song in Stevie's book, and he would just count off songs and just play something and you wouldn't know you know sometimes you wouldn't even announce a song out of like the the hundreds of songs let me tell you the first gig it was um i was playing for president obama's inauguration and it was uh that was your first gig yeah i was I, no i was supposed to play with regina bell so i was playing with regina bell and then someone comes over and they go um so does this band want to play with stevie wonder and we're like yeah right all right so they take us right away in cars to another building and we play a whole set there, and we're like, see, no Stevie Wonder, it's a free gig. Then he comes out, and he sings a song, and we're like, oh, okay, he's gonna sing a song, then we go back to normal. 
he ends up playing for an hour and a half every song in his collection like just going through them so if you didn't know them you were you were definitely he's he's gonna hear he hears everything and the last song he played is all i do and i know the alto solo on that part so i was like i'm gonna start with it and then go and i started with it and he was like yeah so i was like yes <laughs> like that solo you practice your whole life i finally got to use it so i felt good about that <laughs> and then we hung out with him out there you know we took a so it was fun Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, you it know. That's pretty amazing. What, what are the things from that you take to your own band? I mean, is there, obviously there's a lot you can learn from the other band leaders you work with. The, everyone has something different. You can see, like, when you play behind somebody, how the audience responds to them, what they like, what they don't like, and you don't have anything to do with it. You can just watch it, and if it didn't go well, you go, oh, that didn't go well. <laughs> but you can kind of, like, each person, like, Prince is very good at, like, you know, dancing and entertaining and dealing with the music. Stevie is very good at singing and like, it's all music. It's no show. It's all about the hardcore music. You know, everyone has their cool the gangs about the dancing. But, <laughs> you know, you get to see as an entertainer what it is and, you know, try different things out on their shows. And then on your show, you can uh, see how it goes. <laughs> it's interesting to me that on Retox, there's so many different people, but it still sounds like, you know, like it's one record. You're making all these different songs, so to speak. Yeah. It, I mean, back in the days, that would have been like, you know, a singles collection or something. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Well, I was trying to make a, a soul album. I felt like, you know, it's like from what, 1960 to like, what, the late 80s, early 90s, it's the soul period. And I could, if I picked all the music from the 60s, it would just have one sound. So I was trying to get a soul, like, collage together, like any possible type of soul would be on this CD. So for that, the, you know, singers, they don't have very uh, versatile voices. You need a different voice for every period. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's how I got different people. I was like, this is perfect for this period. This is perfect for this one. Okay, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Some of the people on there are like Amp Fiddler. Yeah. You know, Crystal Warren, Maya Sukena. I, I didn't know Amp before the CD. I played a so show with a... Uh, he just stopped by the studio and said, can I play with you? No, or? I did a, a show with a, the David Murray show in Paris with okay. The Roots. It was a special guest, so The Roots were there. Macy Gray was there. Amp Filler was a guest. Tony Allen. And we were all this big, huge band. Brass Fantasy. We were all playing music tribute to Fela and Macy wow. Gray. And Amp was on the thing, and I was listening to this, the mixes going back, and he was like, oh, let me hear something. So I let him hear that song with another girl singing it. And he was like, you know, I should be singing this. And I was like, yeah, you should be. And he was playing around singing it. And I was like, yeah, you should. And when I got back home from Paris, it was a La Villette festival. When I got back home, he called me and was like, yeah, so send me the song. And I sent it through the email. And then he sent it back. He recorded it at his house. And was like, here you go. I left the girl on there, too. So I was like, OK, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> so, that's how wow. it happened, yeah. But pretty much most of the other people are like people you've probably known. Most for a of the long other people time, I've known for like years, years. Each a, each a different story, but different bands or different. You know, Crystal and Solomon, they're both from Kansas City. So I met, when I met Solomon, they're like best friends, so it became one like. Oh, okay. I was like, maybe like, it was a long time ago when I met them. <laughs> you played in Germany a few times before. You haven't been to Alp Jazz before. Nope. But, you know, you already get in kind of like an impression of I'm ready it, that, you know you're ready for it <laughs> yeah well like in New York the shipyards and stuff like that this is already where they want to put the festivals they have a Red Hook festival they ha it's a popular place okay it's usually where the rappers go and the hip-hop it's like the authentic part of the music they say right so you're already <laughs> well <laughs> in this jazz street. is authentic so here we go I know it's and the soul here. squad is real authentic so we're looking forward to that we, uh, I put on my dancing shoes. We're going. Oh, nah. Those are the dancing shoes. Nah. Mine are the dancing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dancing anyways. Yeah. I don't care. Thank you very much, Lakeisha. Well, thank you. See you at the show. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you,